Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, oh, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Yeah! Hey, we're rolling, folks. This is it. It's Tuesday. It's almost, I think, St. Patty's Day happened. Yeah, we're past St. Patrick's Day. Where it's, I think it's August. I don't know what the fuck. Well, I don't know. I wonder if the corona uh, heard it. That's what's weird because we got a, we're recording, we're pre recording. I'm going on vacation despite uh, the warnings. Mm-hmm. And uh, everything's changing so fast with the corona. This could come out in like an apocalyptic world. Ooh. Ooh, that's fun. People might be listening to this on old tin cans and radios right. and using a coat hanger. Boop, 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 boop. This across the many lines. It's Mark and Joe. You right. Know? Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah, they could be in a quarantine right now, just pumping this out and just millions of offended people. Like, what, what is this? Queef? What? I feel like this is good. By the way, I feel like the offensiveness would go down in that kind of world. Ah, completely. If everyone was starving and had AIDS and, you know, their dicks fell off, everyone would be like, well, they said cunt, who cares? Ah, yeah, in the 40s, you could hit your wife with a with a pool cue and nobody cared because the, the Germans were coming. Exactly. Well, speaking of, by the way, hitting your wife and everything, I saw quite a, quite a film last night. Oh. Hell of a picture. A uh, movie, a film. I saw. I've seen a couple of woke feministy films, and uh-huh. some people are gonna hate me for this, but uh, some good, good motion pictures being made. Yeah, it's one of the benefits, I guess, of the the movement and everything. Mm-hmm. Many benefits, of course. Yeah, but there's a couple good movies. I heard Invisible Man is dog shit. I heard it was great. Oh, Renan Hirschberg, who I, I have faith in, he was sure. like, this movie is shit, and anyone that likes it is because they're trying to be woke. Is that right? Because the whole thing is metaphorical. He's the Invisible Man. No one believes her. He's oh. hitting me right now, and they're like, there's no one doing anything. Oh, I didn't and know that. And he said it's so over the top and heavy-handed that it's like you can't even do it. Really? And the reason it has the reviews, which we've discussed on the show before, is that the message is so like this is great. Interesting. I, I heard it from a meathead who liked it, but maybe he didn't. I don't think he caught the message. He didn't get it. Interesting. It's like the people that we uh, we talked about this maybe, but and it too at the end of the movie. I meet so many people that are like I didn't see that as Trump. I'm like what? It too. The movie it too. Oh, I see. I the thought you were the doing sequel. An it too no, no, I hate Shakespeare. He's gay, but the it Hell the yeah. sequel to it. The end of the movie, we talked about this, I think, is like, it's the clown, and he has like big red hair, like oh. a, what do you call it, like he's got Trump head, and he's like, oh, I'm evil, and they're all like, you're just a bully, and they're like, yeah, if we all gang together, we can defeat him, uh-huh. and I talked to all these people, they're like, ah, I didn't see that, I'm like, I'm not trying to say I'm a brilliant film watcher, I'm sure. like, but well, this is pretty fucking Right at right up your ass here. I haven't caught it, but uh, I, I don't care for these political agendas shoved into my clown porn. No, well, I mean, if you can you do it subtly, we are like, I see what's going on here. You yeah. can you can pull it off well, sure. but that one I just thought was like, oh god, I get wow. it. Wow, that's embarrassing. It, like Cool Hand Luke, it's pretty obvious it's a Christ thing. You yeah, know, he's Jesus and the disciples and the the butt sex. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, the it being Trump—that's that's a that's a kook. It's tough, but this. Uh, so, anyways, I heard Invisible Man is like that, but maybe it's good. I don't know. I'll see it. Renan Hirschberg, he is a—you know—he's made mistakes before. Sure, sure, his, Jewish. His face. Yeah, but uh, he's uh, he's a smart cat, and he he loves Sopranos. We we rail about Sopranos. I, I'm a fan as well. There's something though that he hated, and I thought was insane, Uh-oh. or that he didn't like. Well, there you go. Oh, what was it? He loves the Irishman. Yeah, there's something that he thought was one of the worst movies, vice versa. So we have our differences. Maybe yeah. I'll, s- I'll see the uh, picture, but I do see that it's like, oh, nobody sees what has happening to me. Wouldn't that be the woman is invisible? You know what I mean? Like, uh, invisible man seems more of an insult to the male. Well, it's Where not nobody that. nobody cares about men anymore, the white man is out kind of thing. It's not that he's invisible. It's that ever, no one believes her. They're like, uh, I don't see what you're talking about. I see. Her, com- her complaint anal. is right. that the, the beatings are invisible. Right, 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 right. But I do love a good, when it's well done, this movie I saw was called Swallow. 
Ooh, the gay f- porn? Well, they try to get, well, the hetero swallow. True, true. I swallow, and I'm not gay. Could be about birds as well. If it's your own cum, it's not gay. Right, That's right. I'm putting that out there. That's actually really hetero. Yeah, I guess so. You're drinking your own juices. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like a water world when he drinks his piss. What's manlier than that? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool to eat jizz. Your own. When's the last time Costner had a real hit? Field of Dream? I mean, it's a long time. I mean, JFK was post oh, Field of Dreams. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wet Dreams. But it's it wasn't long after that. I mean, that is a tale of two careers right there. Well, the postman was the real division. I feel like that's when it, he was on the fence, and then he went postman, and it was all poo poo from there. Yeah, well, I think it was Waterworld, like stunk, and was like a big deal. Yeah, and then postman was like one of the greatest losses in the history of right, film. I think. Right. Or well, he had dances with dicks. That was before. That was when he was hot. I mean, he got right. that was like a best picture, the whole right. thing. And then JFK is one of the best movies right. ever. And Field of Dreams is amazing. Bull Durham's amazing. Yeah. Silverado is fun. And he was in that one with the boy. Remember they went driving around? That was in the bad time. Lost World? Oh, yeah. What was Lost that? Lost Cause, Lost and Found. World War Lost Z. Boys. Wasn't Lost Boys. Yeah, that was, was Gone Lost Southern World. World. That might be right. It was Perfect World. Perfect World. Yes, it was Perfect World. I never saw the kid wears a mask. I think yes. they robbed banks or something. Yeah, they they had something going on. And then there was another baseball for the love of the game. A swing state. Yes, swing vote. Swing vote. I think it was swing vote. I think it was the one vote. It came down to one vote, and he had like a kid on that one too. Sex swing, which Whoa. was really an absurd he, plot. He, he was in one with Mister uh, Mister Banks. No, yeah, yeah, Mister Banks. Yeah, that was uh, a Rogers. murder. Some thirteen in there too. Thirteen. That kid was older than that. Lucky thirteen. I there was don't something know. with a thirteen. Th- we had thirteen 30. days. Ah. Our fingers just touched. I think we had the fuck. <laughs> like ET. There was thirteen days. I told this story before too, but I was I saw that in Boston. It was about the Cuban Missile Crisis. Mm, I don't know that one. And it was packed, and he played I think McNamara. And his first line, he's like, "We gotta get the bombs out," and ev- the whole crowd was like, "Boom!" Ah. It was like a like a reaction, <laughs> a physical or whatever you call it, audible reaction. Right. Like fuck you. Well, you Bean Towners love your. Your your GIF, your JF K. JFK. Oh yeah, we love the Kennedys. I love the Kennedys. Yeah, my uh, my fun. lady, she's from the Cape Cod area, and her her grandmother's like nine thousand years old, and she's like, "Hello, Mark. Do you like Kennedy?" And I was like, "Who? The the VJ?" And she was like, "Kennedy." And I was like, "John F. Kennedy." She's like, "Yeah. Do you like him?" I was like, "Yeah, I guess." And she was like, "Okay, good." I think she was seeing if I was a Republican. Right. Well, that down Hyannisport is like the. Right. The epicenter of the Kennedys. Yeah, they got photos of him on the wall. I'm like, you don't know the guy. Oh, yeah. Well, they got the, the sailboat. Because I think for people, especially in Boston, Irish Catholic people of a time period, they were that Camelot. Like, right. they had this big family. It was like, oh, my God, Boston Irish people are taking over. Right. They're the fucking leader. And, ah. like, they've never been a Catholic president. They've never been an Irish president. Right. Maybe they've been an Irish. I don't know. Someone's going to yell at me. But, uh, but he was a big Irish cath. You're yeah, right. and he had a fucking crazy accent, right. and he felt like, in Boston, it felt like, he's one of us. This it, is crazy. It's your Obama. Yes, exactly. And uh, he was young and, like, sick. They were all hot, hot and they hot. had sailboats, and they cared about the working class. So it was a big deal up there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is a big deal. Weird to, because Irish used to be, whoa, Irish was need not apply. In the 30s, they say the Irish crime rate was like 80%. It was like, if you saw an Irish guy on the street, you were like, oh, fuck, a Mick. Right, right. A ginger. Yeah, and then they had made it to the uh, White House. It would be like if there was a, what do you call you guys? No, Croatians. What's the people with the spell O with E-A-U-X? Oh, uh, Eastern European? No, you're dumb people. Croatian? The O E O O A U X. I don't know. That's me. What, how'd you get me in there? Joe Burrow, the French bullshit. What's it called? Cajun. Oh, Cajun. The Cajun. Oh, oh, oh. It would be oh, like sorry. if there was a Cajun guy who was like, "Y'all gonna be on to my country," <laughs> and uh, like New Orleans would be like, "Oh my God, we oh, did it!" Yeah, totally. If there was a guy with like a crocodile necklace, yes. and you know he spelt his name Devereaux or right. whatever. Seersucker drinking a mint julep, uh, riding a croc. Yeah. Oh, now we're gonna come down there and do a lot. We're gonna we're gonna go to war. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone would be like, "Oh my god!" Throwing beads and crawfish. Yeah, and then somebody shot him in the face, and you know they had a retired kid that they had to lobotomize. People would be having pictures of that guy. Sure, sure. Huey Huey Long was uh, getting close in the news. Uh, wait. <laughs> that was a Huey Lewis joke. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Huey Long in the news. That's uh, hip to be square. Long in the pants, that guy. Yeah, big dong. The, yep. The power of love. That's the power of love. But, oh, so this the picture I saw, Swallow, last yes, night. Yes, yes, Swallow went, Me. So I saw you for a moment. I saw you, but not really saw you, but at the uh, New Jokes over at Fat Black. Mm-hmm. So I had one of those weird nights last night where I did the podcast here. Then I went and wandered around for like several hours. Jeez. And then uh, walked. You ever you ever be late for a spot when you were in the city five hours early? Isn't that the worst? I just did it yesterday. I was walking around, beautiful day, met up with a friend, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I'll walk up there. And then you're like, my spot's in nine minutes. I'm right. 48 blocks away. I had to get on the bus and like sprint there. What? People are like, where are you coming from? I'm like, yeah, just around. Yeah. Well, luckily that show is eight hours late every time. Yeah. Well, that was the different show. That was at New York Comedy Club. Oh, I see. And then I hung out there talking to a couple of ladies, and I had to get back down to... Uh, New jokes, did new jokes, and I felt good because I was starting to lose my voice. It was a little scratchy, the seasons, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And I looked up IFC, which is one of the great movie theaters right oh, yeah. down the street from your house here. Sixth Avenue. And I said, uh, I looked it up, and there was a picture called Swallow, 88%, uh, thriller, suspenseful, whatever. I go, I'm going to go see this movie. I asked the guy, I said, what time does it let out? He says, midnight. I got a 12:10 spot. And the cellar's a block away. Aha. Uh-huh. So I felt pretty good. Went and saw the movie. It was me and two Asian girls coughing. I'm sure yep. it's fine. Corona. And uh, this is a, this is a good film. I think you'd enjoy really? this film. Yeah, because it, it's it's about feminism and abusive relationship, but it's not uh, over the top crazy. All right, it's all right. It's just like, here's a piece of shit guy, which there's a lot of piece of shit guys. I'm sure, sure many of you are listening. Lifetime is a channel. Uh, but it's about this woman who has a, some kind of complex called, I forget what it's called, where she swallows non-food items. Mm. And it's pretty disturbing. Like Which, she swallows like a thumbtack, a battery, whoa. and then she tries to swallow like a screwdriver and shit. Is that a thing? Or is that a real thing? Yeah, it's called Inu or Pema, Pekka, Pella. This Pekka. is where we need a producer. Call in. Shelby, plug something in right here. Just go. Oh, oh, interesting. Right. I didn't know it was called that. Yeah, so it's called something, yeah. but it's, it's like cutting, I guess. It feels oh. like she's starting to take the power back, you know? Right, right. So it's pretty disturbing because it shows her swallowing this shit, and then what she does is she takes a big spicy dump and then pulls it out, oh. washes it off, and collects it. So she's got a whole oh. collection of things. Oh, wow, that collection must smell like ass. Nah, I think she washes it. She's a housewife. All right. But uh, it's very Hitchcockian. Yes. And I don't God. want to give too much away, but it gets pretty intense. And I, I was I was in. They had me. It was All gripping. Right. It made me want to swallow some cum. Does she, is I cum mean, a food item? Well, she does end up sucking the guy off, so I think it's kind of like a wink-wink. Like, uh, that's not all she'll swallow. Got it. But the guy's a piece of shit, and it's a woman who's like marries like a rich guy, and her, his parents hate her. And then it starts to get really fun. Oh, boy. Not fun to us. Yeah. Not fun. It's not like, you know... Bubble gum and cartwheels. But it's only little stuff. She's not like slowly eating a pillow cushion over a year, you know. No, but she eats dirt. Ah, you're not going to see it. I'll just give away the whole movie. Give me the here. whole thing. Yeah. Seeing this. She's swallowing batteries and thumbtacks. And then, like, she. What happens is she gets pregnant. And then they. This is spoiler alert. From just a battery? fast forward. No, no, no. <laughs> She gets pregnant from the the semen. Ah, yes. She, sw- she swallows semen. That gets you pregnant, that, I found out. That's what I've heard. So they're doing an ultrasound. And uh, they're like, what? Something's going on in here. They send her to emergency surgery, and then there's just like a pile of shit there. <laughs> it's a Hot Wheels car, a, a dreidel. Yeah, and the guy's like, what the fuck, you piece of shit? And then he really tries to like, you know, control her after that, and uh, it's quite, quite, uh, I don't know, endearing and touching. Oh, I don't know. Not happy endearing. So, it's somewhat. I don't okay. want to give away the whole thing, because right. I, think, I think we got people... Really buying into this? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm into it. I want to see her shit out a Christmas tree and a record collection and all this stuff. It's pretty disturb. I would say disturbing, gripping, and powerful. Ooh-hoo! I would. Those are the three words. Wee! Which I, you know, you could also say about my asshole and my comedy. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm in. Swallow, baby. Yeah. I, I'm. I'm swallowing. Go see Swallow. It's right around the corner. It's a hell of a theater too. All right. So I saw that, and then the other one I saw was called The Assistant. Have you heard of that? You've seen two p- film. Yeah, I'm a woke cunt. I guess so. All right. Uh, and The Assistant is like a Harvey Weinstein 
It's basically Harvey Weinstein, mm. and the woman is his assistant, and mm. it's just a day in the life. Oh, boy. And nothing crazy happens, but it gives you a little insight into how it goes down. Nothing crazy? How do you have that movie with nothing crazy? Well, it's all alluded to. Allude. But it's just one day. It's just one regular day. But there's a great scene where she goes to uh, complain, because mm-hmm. the Harvey Weinstein character is like flying in some like 20-year-old girl mm. from Omaha. Per- paradise. And he, yeah, he puts her in a hotel, and he's going to go you know, bang her. Yep. And uh, the woman, she's like, I'm going to go tell HR about this. Okay. So then she goes to HR, and she's like, there's a girl. And the guy's like, what do you mean, girl? Girl? And she's like, well, he's like, how, she's old. How old? She's 20? That's a woman. A woman, right? Mm. And she's like, yeah, I guess it's a woman. He's like, okay. So a woman came and had sex, and she's at a nice hotel. That's the complaint. Interesting. And you kind of, it's so well written because you're like, well, he's making good points. Yeah, I was gonna, I didn't want to say it. But uh, but it's very manipulative and it's it, it's it's gripping. Not powerful. No. Not as powerful. Not as disturbing either. It, it was powerful. Disturbing though. Okay. I would say it's a little less disturbing, a little less powerful, but disturbing and powerful nonetheless. But I think you know, woke cunt or not woke, I feel like a good movie's a good movie. A movie's a movie, but some people, I think, will go, this movie's bullshit, fucking Harvey Weinstein's cool. Oh, uh, well, he's not a cool cat. I think we can all agree on that. He's, and, sorry. He's fat. Yeah, fat, and ugly. in a walker now. Yeah. Which I don't know if I buy. No, I'm not buying it. Interesting. All um, right. Well, yeah, you've seen your fair share. I saw Parasite, and I hung up my, my dancing shoes. I just wanted to say, sorry. Oh, yeah. say, it happens the other way around, obviously, too. Like people are like Harriet Tubman, that movie's incredible. And oh. you're like, this movie's a piece of shit. Yeah, totally. It goes both ways. You just like Harriet Tubman. Right. How much can you get out of a, a Tubman, by the way? Oh, oh she they may I saw the, the, the poster. She's got like a rifle on her chest and you know, jet pack and roller skates. I was like, what are we doing here? Yeah, it seems a little silly. Yeah, they're really stretching. Now Rosa Parks. That shouldn't be a movie. Shouldn't? Well, okay, she changed seats. We got it. That's the whole thing. That's a web series. Yeah, I think it would be fun to make... I was just thinking about something the other day. It was an idea for a comedy, but I can't remember what it was. Fuck. Well, we could have used that. There was something dramatic that would be funny to make as a comedy. Hmm, rape? I can't remember what it was. All right. Like, just a day. Like I think it would be fun to do like a, a, a show about... Harriet Tub or Rosa Parks, but it's like a curb your enthusiasm. Oh. It's not even in, doesn't have anything to do with the bus. Right. She's just living. She's just funny. Like funny shit happens. You know. She slips yeah. on a banana peel, and you know her father's yells at her or whatever the hell. And then you hear ba ba da ba da ba da. Yeah, yeah, something fun like that. Right. All yeah, right. How's the front seat? Pretty, pretty good. Yeah, something fun. I like it. Yeah, I'll think of the other idea later. All right. You better talk. They're going to get mad at me for talking uh, too much. You're fine. You're fine. Well, how about this? I took your, your gay advice there. I had a big wad of Canadian bills because mm-hmm. I went to Toronto and sold a bunch of shirts, but I didn't think about the currency change, so mm. I, I got my ass eaten uh, up up in the, the Great White Way, came back with a big wad, forgot to exchange it, just went to the bank. Guess what that rate is? Uh, 60 cents on the dollar? Wow. 67. Wow. Pretty good. 67 is better than I thought, I guess. But Is it? That's, that's more tough. than half. Well, it's better than I thought, I'm saying. Damn. It's by seven cents. Right, right. Yeah. Seven cents, Vern. They got me. So I went to the chase, and they go, you sure you want to do it? And I said, well, is there a currency exchange place? They go, you better call them. So I called one, and he goes, well, today, it changes every day. It's like the weather. He's like, today we're at 68, and Chase was 67. So I said, give me that extra penny. Yeah, that's good. So I gave them about 850 Canuck clams, and they gave me about 600 back. Wow, that's tough. That's when you go to when you sell merch up there. You got to crank like a book, right? Twenty U.S., twenty five Canadian. Nah, but I think maybe more than twenty five. Yeah, whatever it is. I mean, you got to up the prices. In the old days, I'm sure I've talked about this before too. But it used to be the reverse. Like right. when I back in 2000, 2001, I would go up to the titty bars all the time mm-hmm. in Montreal. And you'd go literally with two hundred dollars cash. They'd hand you back three fifty, and that would be a weekend. Wow! Isn't that weird to think about? I would drive all the way to Montreal. We would go to the casino and the strip clubs with two hundred bucks for the weekend. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. That's all in food, strip club. I two hundred bucks. But you could do it as a, as a youth. You get a couple PBRs, you get a couple shots, you get a couple slices of pizza as a meal, and you're good. Yeah, I guess you'd yeah you'd get you'd pregame. You'd get a thirty right. rack and right. then some like a fifth of whatever, and then just pound it. Yeah, and Molson and all that shit is higher alcohol. 
Mm. But yeah, it's like going to Mexico, but you're going up, yeah. down. Mexico, you, you bring 20 bucks, you're, you're a sultan of Brunei. Yeah, and then you got those French dames up there. Oh, love that Canadian clam. I heard a theory that there's, there's, it's all French and Irish and a bunch of, there was a ton of prostitutes That's what up I heard. there. Yeah, and so everyone's hot because the prostitutes were hot. Back then, prostitutes were hot. Right. Well, they were French. They shipped in a bunch of French whores. Right. And, uh, you know, full bush and armpit, but the faces were dynamite. Now it feels like hot women, they do well in regular life. Right. And the hookers are, you know. Hideous. Barbara Streisand or whatever. Well, I think we can do work more like James Brolin. Yeah, Streisand's not bad. Nah, big honker. But you like that. I like it. I like a young Babs. Now she looks like a goose. <laughs> But uh, back in the day, she had a fun look, piercing eyeballs. I like Sarah Jessica Dickless over there. I think it's insane that there's a whole thing about her being ugly. You do? I think she's like a smoke show. Oh, man, simpatico. L.A. Story, I've beat oh. off to that movie more times than I've beat off to my Aunt Betty. Tell me about it. Your Aunt Betty is no <laughs> slouch. She's on, like, roller skates like Tubman, oh. and she's got, like, suspended. Her tits are huge. Huge. Naturals. Yeah, I watch Sex in the City every night before bed, and yeah. I got a nice heart on it. Yeah, I don't even see the city. <laughs> it's hot, man. Yeah, she's she's smoking. I told you she was at my uh, birthday party one year. Her and Broderick. Wait, what? Yeah, they were just at the same bar, I but see. it was pretty exciting. Was it over here? No, it was up in uh, O'Han O'Hanigans or O'Flanagan's. Remember that place on Forty Six? Yes, yes. They used to stay up until like six in the morning. We could go. I mean, their apartment's two blocks away. We could knock on the door and get trick or treat. Maybe we'll do it. Maybe. They grew up there. Yeah, we know all their their catalog or their their canon. What's what is that? K A no C A N O N. I don't know. That means like your your whole collection, your Canon. No, oh, I know the camera. I know Mike Cannon. Yeah. I know Candid camera. Cannon ball. Yes, that's a popular and thing. A, and a and a way to jump in a pool. Cannon fodder. Right. I thought I had an idea for Mike Cannon to have a show called Cannon Potter. Ah. But no one uses Potter except us. Right. Right. I like it. Wait, as in Cannon fodder. Yeah, but Potter, right? As in, you know, something you, you pot you about. You pot, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cannon, Buchanan. Oh, James. Yeah, well, he was a president. Huh? It was Pat too? He tried yeah. a few times. There's a couple presidents that just go under the radar. The yeah. Radar. You know, like uh, Taft gets a little love. Taft was the bathtub guy, seventh inning stretch. He uh, invented that or oh, whatever. Okay. I think he stood up because he was too fat. Right. And so everyone stood up. But then you don't know anything about Adams. No, he's the second president. It's second. There's a couple Adams. There's Sam Adams and there's John Adams and there's John Quincy Adams. Are those two different guys? I don't know. There's don't a know. whole Adams situation. There's but, the Adams family. Right. right. <laughs> da -da -da -da. They're splitting the Adam. Oh, that was big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Up and at them. Uh, but wait a minute. John Adams was the president. Quincy was not. I thought it was John Quincy Adams. Uh, I thought it was Quincy Jones. I think there's John Adams and there's a John Quincy Adams, but I don't know if that's the same guy. I don't either. And then Sam Adams, he's not a president, but he's a founding father. And a, and a drunk. Is that right? That well, makes sense. I think booze. they were all drunk. By the way, the guy, the Ed Koch, or not Ed Koch, whatever that guy's <laughs> name. Koch. What's the guy's name who does the Sam Adams and he's always drinking? He's like, this beer has been perfected. I'm like, you're just an alcoholic. You just go around the vats tasting all day. I don't know. I don't think it's Koch. Maybe it's Cuomo. Vote, uh, for, <laughs> vote for Cuomo, not the homo. No Cuomo. Um, yeah, I'm not sure who that is. But all right, call in. That sounds right. Yeah, well, this is a kooky episode. We're I have to say. all over the highway. It feels like a Patreon. Well, can I give the full disclosure? I like to disclose. You love disclose. I'm I like a, dis naked. I'm a disclosure, and uh, we had to record three in like four days. This is back to back, so I got nothing. Yeah, he's going on vacation. I'm hitting the road. We're we uh, we're we're, we're uh, stockpiling for Corona. Yeah, I walked up here being like, I guess I'll tell him about Swallow. I don't know. Yeah, Swallow's big. <laughs> I had to tell him about uh, the money cash I just did. <laughs> this feels like when Kramer couldn't tell his own stories. <laughs> the very pants I was returning. Right, or the movie phone. Why don't you just tell me the movie you want to see? Well, I do have one thing. Well, please. I was sitting on it because I wanted to see how much time we could kill. I well, could, we're halfway through. I could What? Yeah. I can do one more thing if you want me to do it or save it. Hit, hit me with the thing. Well, it's not even that big of a deal, but I was uh, riding the hog around, hit a big humdinger of a bump, got a flat tire. 
Okay. So I set up. Well, here we go. And the, the gas stations in this town have gone kaput. Yeah, they're on the, you got to go far west or far east. Yes. They're coastal. Right. Coastal. So uh, like the liberals. So I had to go all the way to 8th Avenue from the stand and uh, I had to put air in it. When's the last time you did that? Remember that was like a normal thing? Like you put the quarters in, mm-hmm. you know, you unscrew it, you do it. I had to do all that. It's a it's a buck fifty for three minutes of air. Wow. Which is a raping. It's air. It's free. Yeah, we're giving you sixty for nothing. I know. So uh, you know, I go up to the guy, like, here's a five, and he hands me back a couple of quarters, like two bucks and quarters, then he gives me the three dollar coins. Oh, uh, the sack of Jawea. Hate the sack. Yeah. Suck my sack, Jawea. So I hate that. I hate that because now you're just ching changing and chonging all over the place. You're like the K man. Right, right. Paper money. <laughs> bills, bills. <laughs> so uh, it's a horrible team. So uh, I go, I go, fucking put the air in, and I'm, I'm, you know, this thing is so loud. It's like air. It would just be like. Pssst. You know what you should do is bring your lady, have her sit on the cube while you're doing that. Sit on the. Oh. She gets on that fucking box with her, her legs out. That's not bad. You got a nice fresh bike and a nice off light lady. Yeah, and after she squirts, I can hose it down with the air. <laughs> <laughs> Try her off. Yeah, because chicks used to sit on the dryer back in the 80s. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. I think it was rumbling. You put some shoes in there, some clogs. Well, there's oh. so many things that vibrate. It's kind of nice. Right, You got yeah. the, the razor. Uh, a toothbrush. Some, yes. The other stuff, whatever Oral-B. else. Um, so, uh, I see this, uh, cranked up car. What do you call those? Uh, he's riding the rim. This lady is in a Camry and you can hear it a mile away. You know, grill or a rim on cement. Ah. Rim job. So this woman pops up on the, uh, what's that called? The neutral ground we call it in Louisiana. Rim Reaper? The median. Median. Yes. Yes. Not the mean, the median. So it pops up on the median Riding the rim, and then now the median hits the the grill and the middle of the car. Now that she's riding that, there's sparks going everywhere. She pops over the median, comes into the gas station, and pulls up next to me. It was the loudest thing ever. Jesus. And I was like, what is this lady doing? And uh, she's like, can I get some of that air? And I I finished, and I go, here, take the air. There's like 30 seconds left. And uh, I was like, who is this woman? What's going on? So I had to stay and watch. Apparently it was an Uber driver lady who hates Uber. She hates driving. And she's just given up. That's the end of her career right now? I guess so. She got a flat, and she just popped that car over the median. She didn't give a shit. Wow, that's what I think the city does. You do something, and then we were just talking about this before we started, about a guy. People just go, I- I'm done. I'm out. He was, She was out, baby. Wow. It was over. And it was fun to watch. It was kind of like when somebody just throws their apron, except she threw the car into the wind. I fantasize about that in the, the picture I was telling you about, Swallow. Yes. Uh, there's a scene. I'm just giving away the whole movie, but she just smashes her iPhone. She's in a hotel. Mm. She just takes the thing. And I have fantasies of that, just taking this thing and breaking it in half and throwing it up my ass. I know, but then two seconds later you go, shit, how's my uh, tweet doing? Yeah, that was a big mistake. Yeah, but, how's uh, my email? The idea of quitting just seems really fun. Yeah, that's why that uh, that Ari stuff is enticing with the uh, with the China and the flip phone and the uh, Judaism. Yeah, but he's off. He's back on his smartphone. Then as soon as he got back on, he desecrated his career <laughs> for a moment. <laughs> and uh, he's back. He was supposed to go out, shoot a special, and go out, and it all got whatever. Yeah. All because he was using his smartphone. Yeah, I guess so. But I'm about to go out to Joshua Tree and oh, be out there. That'll be great. It's nice, yeah. That'll be real nice. You'll get a tan. You'll get uh, some zen in you. We'll see. Hopefully I don't get corona. Nah, you'll be fine. They don't They don't, They don't. don't live out in Joshua. Corona's in the city. It's urban. It's so crazy. Two weeks from... This comes out two weeks from now. Everything could be different. Could be wiped out. We could be living in uh, Cuba. Hmm. Wouldn't be bad, huh? Seems nice. Yeah. I like the sandwiches. Um, all right. So, yeah, that was it. And so I, I put some air on the bike, and I put some gas in it. Two bucks to fill it up, which feels good. Hey, all you, right. You literally watch the tank go... And then you close it, and you just see gas splishing and splashing. Oh, it does it in real time? What do you mean? The, the little thing? Oh, I'm talking about the, you see the liquid. 
Oh, wow. So you got a clear gas tank. Clear. Oh. Well, no, it's not clear. You can look in it. It's just, I'm just looking in a hole. Oh, I see. Yeah, because the car, you never have that. Right. That's a fun thing to see. That should be clear. There should be more things that are clear. Yes. A toilet. I think I'd like a clear toilet. It'd be fun. While you're shitting, I sit next to it and just watch your poop slip out. That would be delightful. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be a lot of fun. And you could see what the clog was. Yeah. Toilet's clog. You're like, oh, it's a cat. Yeah, yeah. Look at it. There's an orange turd from when you had Cheeto pie. Right, right. Is it Cheeto pie? Frito pie. Frito, Cheeto. Yeah. Who's counting? I couldn't think of anything orange. Yeah. But my shits are orange sometimes. Weird. Must be all that uh, high C. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's stress or something. I don't know what the hell's going on. Orange shit can't be good. But uh, you remember in the 90s when everything was clear? Like they made a clear beeper, then a clear phone, and a clear clock. Pepsi clear. Crystal. Um, yeah, then Clear Tomato. That was in the Van Halen video. Clear Tomato? Yeah. It was a, the Van Halen video right now. There was a guy holding it. It looked like a jellyfish. I remember being like, what? They're clear. Who? Jellyfish. Oh, yeah. You can see right in the organs. How about this one? <laughs> clear. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And on flights, I'm clear. Then there was uh, that movie that Larry David did, Going Clear, or Clear Clear History. Clear History. That was very underrated. Yeah, Chicago blew it. His old his wife blew <laughs> oh, yeah. all of Chicago. Hey, hey, folks, sheath underwear. We love sheath. I'm wearing them right now. They got a nice carriage, nice sack holder. I love the sheath. They feel good. They're comfortable. They breathe. They're lightweight. They're nimble. Uh, this they're, episode is brought to you by Sheath. They're sexy too. Oh, they're so hot. My wife is really into them. They, the, the touch is like that. What do you call it? It's uh, silky. silky. Yeah, it yes. feels silky and sexy. Yeah, they're hot, baby. You, you're gonna want to wear these. They make the the package just look real good. They feel good. What makes Sheath underwear different? Simple. Sheath underwear has a special two pouch compartment that keeps your twig and berries from sticking to your inner thigh. That's it, folks. That's the idea, and it's brilliant. Love sheath. It's made from a super comfortable blend of modal and spandex. That's what it is. It stretches as you move, keeps you cool, keeps you dry. No bunching, no pinching, no sagging. Sheath underwear cradles your junk like a mama gorilla holding her precious newborn baby. And by Ooh. the way, the founder, the guy that invented it, he messages us. He's a Tuesday. Yo, you better believe he it. He doesn't just listen to hear the ads. He's an actual Tuesday. So support a fellow Tuesday. Yes. And it gives you support. Also, I mentioned this before, the little pocket pouch thing, every time you pull your dick out, it's quite pleasurable. Yeah, Because it's that's like true. silky. It's like you're pulling out of a lady. It's fucking great. It's great. So go to sheathunderwear.com and order with the promo code Two's gaze yes. to get 20% off your sheath underwear, 100% money back guarantee. You got it. Sheathunderwear.com, promo code Two's gaze. Support this show by supporting them. Get sheath underwear and let them support your balls. Yes. Now, who else is this episode brought Blue to you Chew. by? Oh, we love Blue Chew. <laughs> That's her letting me know she's here. Oh, the lady's coming in. We'll, right. we'll, we'll, we'll get it in there quick. Uh, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Blue Chew, the first chewable dick pill. Wow. Blue Chew has the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. You can take Blue Chew anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach. And since it's chewable, they work up to twice as fast as a pill, so you can be ready whenever an opportunity arises. You got that right. I've chewed a few in my day, and it's a good boner. It's a long-lasting boner. I'll chew uh, one up and be hard for hours. I mean, this thing keeps you going, folks. It's good stuff. It's good for you. And it actually tastes pretty good, if I might say so. (laughs) Oh, you may say so. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, right now, we've got a special deal for our listeners. You can visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free when you use our special code, code Tuesdays. Just pay $5 shipping. Again, that's blue com promo code Tuesdays to try it free. Blue Chew is the better, cheaper, faster choice, and we thank them for sponsoring the podcast. Love you, Blue Chew. Thank you. Uh, all right, so yeah, that was all I had, but uh, we got something out of that. All right, yeah, that's not bad. Well, this is something that's kind of fun, I think. Hit me. I was in Ann Arbor, uh, out there doing Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase with old Kooky Roger. Oh, yeah, that show, that club is lunch. Yeah, you know what's funny? I was there, and I that was the last club I did before my special, mm-hmm. and I 
was sitting there. The shows were so good that I was like, I should have shot my special here. Yeah. And my pal, Carl Johnson. You know Carl Johnson? Carl Johnson. He's always there. He wears like a hat. Sounds made up. Got a beard. No. He's one of the guys that's always hanging in the green room. Oh, yeah, yeah, green room guy. That club's got a lot of green room guys. They're like like monkeys just hanging on a vine in there. Yeah, you show up, you're like, this is insane. Yeah, you got nowhere to sit. You're the headliner. It's fine. They're nice, but you're like... This is outrageous. Yeah, but you know what's kind of fun is you're the you're the big dog alpha. So if you say something, they all shut up and go, "What's that?" Ah, you know. But you I, can't abuse it. But it's nice every now and then. Yeah, no, it was nice. It was a nice hang. I don't want to sound. I don't want everyone to feel bad about it. But you walk in there, and you're like, "This is, this is crazy." It's like yeah. an AA meeting in there. <laughs> I know it's a bus stop. Less funny. Uh, but True. I go in there, and so I was like, I should have shot my special here because you, you have this anxiety. With shooting a special, which ended up being okay, but... Being great. You want... Every show you do is so hot that you're like, I want it to sound like this. The biggest totally. fear is to have totally. a special that doesn't... You don't kill as hard as you normally do. I had that this with my special. And then forever you want to go, yeah, this is good, but you should have seen Saturday in, yes, in Omaha or whatever. Yes. But Ann Arbor was so good. And then Carl Johnson reminded me, he's like, yeah, you said last time you were here, your next album you're going to do here. Oh. And I was like, how did I forget that? So I got to remember next time. I'm going to remember that. Have a crew come out and, and shoot it in Ann Arbor or Rosemont Zanies. That's a hot one as well. I like that. You could, you could shoot there at the back. You could put a yes. camera in there and small. Very wide. And I thought this was funny. On stage, I riffed this. I said, I'm going to do my next special in Ann Arbor. I'm going to call it Go Blue. See, the football team ah. is Michigan Wolverine. Their big thing is go blue. Everything's ah, go blue. That's like the Michigan thing. Right. And I'm going blue. I'm dirty. Oh. So it's a pun, but I mean, great. it bombed. It bombed harder there than it did here. Oh, wow, because it was bad here. I, I was like, is this, you guys not, uh, you know, Michigan? Yeah. But I think it's one of those towns where they resent the school or something. Well, they're very intellectual, uh, high society over there. They're readers in Ann Arbor. I don't know about that. Well, not high society, but I think they're they're <laughs> they're all up. They're all uh, up their own asses. They're a little precious over there. They're not they're not a bunch of Kalamazoo cunts. They're fucking woo We like to have a cup of coffee and listen to NPR. Oh, I was thinking different. I think you might be mistaken. Really? Ann Arbor, the school is nice, uh-huh. but most of them go to the school. I thought they were Kalamazoo people that came into Ann Arbor. I thought they were like, what? Go blue. I don't know. Even. I feel like it's all bookstores, coffee shops, and uh, P- Planned Parenthood clinics well in this in the downtown area there but you go a few feet and it's a little rough around the nipples yeah that's true i think a lot of new orleans is like that you go eight feet out of the city and it's uh coon ass alligator soup and rape yeah well i don't know what happened but i thought it was a decent thing but it stinks evidently i like go blue yeah it stinks but anyways i might do my next <laughs> album there because that club really gets a rocking it really cooks low ceiling good layout smart Smart crowds over there. Yeah, they're good crowds, and a lot of Tuesdays, too. A lot of Tuesdays. You were there the week before, so they were all, some seen it. I think that Roger Cat, the guy who runs it and owns it, he kind of, what do you call it, where you produce people you like, he he like uh, trains the audience. Hones as a word. The audience is... Very trained, disciplined, uh, Uh. susceptible. Uh, mm. uh, 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 garnished, garnished. Oh, I know what you're saying. Yes, they're very. You do it with a, like a housewife, right? Yeah, yeah. Shape. You uh, submit, uh, submissive. Submissive. Uh, um, they're very. Garnish is close. It's uh, Gertrude. Ah, shit. Garnished, they're, 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 the, uh, the people are very trained. Oh, fabricated. Manipulated. Uh, manipulated something. But that's not it. Raped, beaten. Oh, shit. Swallow. Uh, what is it? Hold they're well trained. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, right? Yes, they've been they've been given the goods. They get good acts there. Yeah, they've been uh, worked out. Home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, shit. What do you do with the dough? Need, you need the dough. You need the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> that's true. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fuck me. Ah, uh, anal dick. I fuck see what you're saying. Beef. Jews. Yeah, you're uh, fingering my ass, and I'm about to come, but yeah, I just can't. I can't quite get nut. it. You got to think about your aunt. Hold on. The the, the audience is very. Uh, oh, I almost had it. Oh shit! Hold God. on. Stop saying things for a second. All right. Just give them the dead air. They can take it. I don't know if they can. The, uh, no, we can't. That's true. The audience is nourished. Nourished. Nur- nature. Nurture. Is there an N word? 
I know one. The audience is very, uh, uh, uh oh, oh, I almost had it. It's like what you do with a, a puppy. Oh, uh, trained, you disciplined. Know, you, you, uh, you, you, you fucking graze, grazed it, uh, reared. You pull on the ears. Damn. You cuddle. Collar. Now we better move on. All right, we better all move right. on to some It'll other business. It'll hit me later. It'll hit me in the shower in 2021. The audience has been uh, refurbished, you know, funneled. Oh boy, this is the longest we spent on one of these. I think we got to move. We got to move on. All right, all they right. They got good crowds. Damn it! I'll say this: they got good crowds there. Yeah, yeah. the 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 owner really. Uh, Tainted the crowds. Well, Shit. he's a he's a strange bird. He's oh. a nice guy. He comes in there with his coffee. He's smoking cigars in the green room. Old school. Really? You smell cigar. You're like, that's Roger. He's in his wow. janitor closet smoking a cigar. He's about four one. He's got glasses and a stash. And he'll throw the crowd yes, out. He'll yes. be like, get the fuck out of here. He weighs 110 pounds. And he's one of those guys that's so little but so assertive. Yes. That people must be like, Shit, what's up with this guy? I better right. get out of here. Right. He I just- don't know. If- Wears a sweater and, and baggy jeans and uh, holds a coffee mug. Yeah. He's quietly stoic. He's very stoic, and he's stoicized his audience as fuck. Ah! Nurtured! Not quite. Uh, wait, that's, I that's almost something. had it. He's fucking This is one of these you coerced. can't Google. Coerced? Ah, you're getting, you're massaging. Uh, you're close. You're, 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 you're edging. Fine-tuned. Fine-tuned. Fuck me hard, you know, right in the ass. Very fabricated shit. Because Denver, they always say it about Denver. Oh, Denver's a great club because Wendy has really blah 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 the audience over the years. Curated. Yeah. Did I already say that? No, that's not shit, it. Shit, did I already say Curated that? Curated is no. That's is, you do that at a museum. Not bad. And I don't want to. Cultured. It's a c word. I think. Is it c? Cunt. Coos. Clam. Bake. Ah! Cultivated. Cultivated. Is that it? What did I say before that? Cultivated. What did I say right before that? You said curated. Curated. Cultivated. 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 Oh, thank God. Cultivated. Cultivated. She's really cultivated, uh, cultivated an audience. Cultivated an audience. Cultivated. Wow, I would have never got that. All right. Thank God. Teamwork. Oof. Cultivate Holy and hell. curate feels so close. That's why wow. I got so excited with curate. Man, well done. Well, my heart's done. beating. Yeah, that was intense. I didn't think we were gonna get it. We got it. I'm flooded. My wedding day I didn't beat this hard. No, I think we lost a couple followers, but it was worth it. Oh, yeah, what can you do? We didn't need them. No, no, we cu- we cultivated just now. Yeah, we've cultivated an audience. That's true. Swallow. Ah, uh, spit. Um, that's hot. Everything that is hot for a while, the opposite becomes hot. Don't you find that? Well, that's it. Well, that's all life and, and style and music and art. Like early on, you like you want. A girl to swallow your load, and then later she spits it in my eye. I'm like, that's what I need right, the whole time. Right, right, yeah. I mean, it's like grunge before, and then it was hair rock before hair metal before that, and then disco before that, mm-hmm. and then you know, uh, hippy dippy Beatles. <laughs> it just keeps changing. The shitty Beatles. Yeah, well, they, you know, it's like woke comedy, and now it's being pushed back by you know your uh, dark shit and your edgy, and then it'll be a activism he again. It just keeps flipping and flopping. Bell bottoms are in, then they're out, then they're back in. Yep. The, More the, examples. The Navy started that. The Navy? Yeah, bell bottoms. Those Navy guys. Is that so you can right? get them off past your boots. Interesting. And then it caught on. The military gets no credit for all their uh, fashion additions. Oh, I'm glad you added the fashion thing. I'm like, they're getting quite a bit of credit. Uh, well, yeah. yeah. You can't have troops. a sporting event without seven moments of silence and Good three point. anthems and a plane walking by. Right, right, Blue Angels, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> Those Blue Angels, all right, you did a loop-de-loop. Give me three weeks in a, in a plane, I can pull a yoke. Uh, oh, so I'm doing Ann Arbor. Yes, and big Ann. They, they, we cultivate a crowd. Annie. And after the Thursday show, I go, there's no media, this is nice. And then Roger comes up and says, would you mind doing a little radio tomorrow? So right ah. away, you're like, ah. he's like, you don't have to. But wh- what am I? I'm never going to be like, all right, then I'm not. Of course, but that's what you're thinking. But he says it's at noon, which noon, the whole thing with radio is it's getting up. Noon isn't bad. So noon is like, I got nothing to do all day anyways. True, and it gets you out of the house. 
So he says, it's noon, and I have a rental car. He goes, you can go over there. You can drive yourself. He goes, it's one segment. It's sports radio. You don't have to do it. But I say, I'm happy to do it. I love the guy. I love the club. Are tickets okay? Is he worried about tickets? or? I think they just they advertise, and he's like, you don't have to. It doesn't matter. Tickets were fine. Okay. And so I said, oh, I'm happy to do it. And it's nice to do things, you know? Sure. And it gets you, uh, gets you up and at him. So I said, sure. So he texts me the address. Next day I go, I have breakfast, I'm going down to radio, and it's one of these, like, uh, what do they call it, business parks, mm. where it's like a million offices all in this one big parking lot. And you the, know? the kids eat lunch down there and everything. What kids? The, the workers. I guess so. Is it one of those public things with a bunch of tables? That's what I'm picturing. No, no. It's like a, a parking lot with a bunch of offices in it. Oh, This one said, is, okay. a, you know, a sh- T-shirt printing. This one is ah. a radio station. This one is your mother's asshole. He said park, so I pictured a park. No, business park is like just, uh, they call it a park. Oh, I see. But it's not a park. It's like a... Parking lot. Yeah. Rosa Parks. So I go down there. And I, I walk into the plaque, I walk into the address, and it says, whatever, 219 Blow Me Boulevard. Mm-hmm. And it says 219 on the thing. Okay. Now, I don't realize it's a sweet number. It's sweet this, ah, sweet that, sweet and low. Sweet Caroline. Sweet and pepper. That's not it. Mm, sweet and high. What is the sweet? Isn't there a band, Sweet and it's Sweat? Su- sweet and Sour. Ah, yes, that's mm. it. No, that's a band, but uh-huh. I like sour solo stuff. <laughs> so I walk in there, and right away... A woman is behind the desk, and she kind of gasps. She goes, she like does this. She like shuffles. She's like, "Can I help you?" Mm. And I was like, "Yeah, I think maybe I'm in the wrong place. I'm looking for, uh, you know, Joe and Bo Radio, <laughs> whatever, yeah, yeah. whatever, Dick and Steve, right. the Hammer. I'm yeah. looking for the Hammer Radio." <laughs> And she's like, whoa, 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 and she's like shuffling papers. Uh-huh. And I could feel, you know, when you just go somewhere, the vibe feels weird. Yes. And it's pink signs and ribbons signs. and Liz Warrens and like Uh-oh. a Hillary bobblehead. Mm. And there's a bunch of, there's like rainbows. Oh, and yeah, you're in a women's abuse center. Exactly. Oh, that's where I'm at. I've been to many. I know I'm like the back of my hands. And I, so does she. I could, <laughs> I could feel it. I could just feel something amiss. I could tell by her reaction. You can't have a man in there. No. A loose man. Man out there, woo! And I'm the straight white guy, and I see like doctor this, therapist this, behavioral therapy thing, and I'm like, I pull up my phone, and I'm like shaking now, because right away I can tell, and I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable ever mm-hmm. in my life, sure. and so I'm going, uh, yeah, I'm looking for uh, Steve and the Wolf. Right. It says 19, <laughs> and she's like, well, I don't know, I've never, I don't, I don't, I don't. and then a, a kindly Asian woman came out who looked sexy, ironically. Interesting. I don't know about ironic, but. I guess it's kind of ironic. Ironic. Because it feels very, you know, non-sexual and right, peaceful. But right. she comes out and I'm like, I'd like to eat their ass yeah. on a Wednesday. Sure. <laughs> so she comes out, she's got heels and a business suit, and she's like, I think it's a different switch. She was nice. Mm. This lady was fucking freaking out. Yeah. But I get it. She probably thinks, you know, my ex-wife could be in there. Or the oh. se- like, you know, she's having a session, and I'm going, is fucking Barbara in here, that cunt? Yeah, I want to hit her. Yeah, she's been swallowing all my coins. Right, swallow. So I go, I go, yeah, I think I'm in the wrong place. I had, like, hands up, don't shoot face. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, I think it might be on the other end. This is a small, this is, you're in the wrong place here. Right. And I was like, I- I'm so sorry. I- I'm sorry for everybody that's ever hurt you. Yeah, yeah, well. The Asian one wasn't scared because she could have probably karate'd. Yeah, she she got it. But I walked out of there and I was like, woof. But it felt like one of those like time travel movies where they go to the wrong year. Yeah, yes, like yes. they get out of the booth and it's like, and you're like, oh shit, this right. is, we're supposed to be in 1978. Yes, yes, get back in. But it's weird when you have that moment right away of like something's up here. Oh yeah. And I looked and it was like abuse center, therapy oh. center, recovery center, safe space. It says oh. the whole thing. Not for you. And so I could have really fucked someone. If she had been coming out and been like, so that's the story of my uncle blowing me. Yeah. And I walked in, you know. Wow. So. I wonder if you looked like the guy who hit the the receptionist. I, she was obviously battered at some point. Oh, for sure. Beer so battered. I, it it could have been a guy that looked like me. I hope I didn't trigger anybody. But Yeah, and you're a tall cup of jizz, you know. You're you're a, a figure. Yeah. Did you, did you do a little uh, jujitsu? I'm imposing. I mean, I yes. got herpes, the whole thing. So. You got it. So anyways, I ended up finding the radio station, but it was one of those ones where you're walking, you're like, wow, that, that could not have been further off from what I'm going to do. And then it cuts to me in radio, and I'm like, well, I got a wife, and we fuck, and yeah. uh, come down and see me. <laughs> right. But uh, it ended up being fun. It was an easy segment. It was one segment, and the guy, you could tell they were a little like, what's the, because everything's so PC there. Oh, at the that, radio. Yeah, and like, I'm just making a joke about, I said something about, 
my sister's hot or I want to have sex with my sister or some weird stuff. And they're like, okay, well, yes, and I was yes. like, well, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. This is sports radio. This is supposed to be a bunch of guidos and, and knuckleheads. Yeah. But, uh, anyways, it was fine. Everybody's nervous. And then they said, uh, uh, he's like, you could just do like 10 minutes. But, uh, Roger was like, Joe DeVito. He stayed for an hour. They Ugh. loved him. And I did one segment, and they were like, okay, thanks for coming by. And I was like, ah, oh, damn it, they hated me. Well, the sister fucking probably threw them off. Yeah, I think that was bad. But, uh, but that's what I love about you. You got a lot of range there, Fatty. I mean, you can see Swallow and, and support the Warren and the Bernie, but then you can also make a sister fuck joke and scare a bunch of sports kooks. Well, I think it's important to uh, understand that there's people that are on your team, but we enjoy an irreverent sense of humor. I know. Well, everybody's uh, all the way or no way or all gay or no pay. Yeah, but we, we need each other. Yes. You know, we're all looking out. Everybody wants to be happy and not suffer, and some of us just find, uh, you know, insane things funny. It just blows my mind when the most educated and, like, compassionate, open-minded people are the most tribal. They're like, you don't think of this? I'll kill you. You're dead to me. I want to burn your house down. You're like, whoa, whoa. I just have one thing we disagree on. Yeah, it's all horse shit. It's like, you should never work again because of that thing you yeah. said. You're like, well, that's not very progressive right. or liberal or uh, considerate or compassionate. Here, here. And I'm not that guy. That was a, a zinger. You know, like, you, you can't just go up by zingers, which kind of proves that they just want to get you. Yeah. Well, it's also, I, we say this all the time with the podcast, and I'm like, well, I trust people to understand that we're kidding. <laughs> wow, well, that's kidding. Uh, out. <laughs> it's like a weird thing of like, yeah, that's your responsibility right, to right. understand that I'm joking. But then they go, oh, you can't just, you know, you go, it's a joke. And they go, oh, you can't just say it's a joke, and that makes it okay. And I'm like, well, it was a joke. Yeah, it's okay to me. Yeah, it's okay to me. And you getting me fired. They're, they're like, well, what if that's just a joke? I'm like, yeah, but I got fired, so it wasn't a joke. Right. Yeah. 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 What can you do? Sorry. I got to stop complaining about this shit. Well, I'm fresh out. Oh, uh, come on. I gotta, well, I got one other thing. Oh, that's Speak, not out. Speaking that's of which, fresh. I don't know if it's a story, though, but it's, it, it goes well with this. Uh -oh. I was out, I, we talked about Phoenix uh, uh, three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I was there with Louie, and uh, the morning of we're driving to Tucson, which is only a two-hour ride. We're staying at that nice hotel. Mm -hmm. So I said, we're staying on Camelback Mountain. The hotel's like in Camelback. Ooh. You ever done Camelback? No. Camel Sig. Next time you're in uh, Phoenix, you got to go do it. It's a hike? It's a hell of a hike. I mean, it's do it on the one show night. It's long. Well, how long is the drive? Two hours, you say? No, Camelback's in the city. That's oh, what's wow. amazing about Phoenix. Everywhere you go in Phoenix, you see the mountain. It looks like a camel oh, sitting down. Oh, I've seen the hump. There's a big hump, and there's a head and a hump. Yeah. And you can go do it. It's like the only city that has a fucking mountain right in the middle of the thing. I'm down. Uh, so you go down there, and it's like a three points of contact hike. you got to really use your hands and oh, climb boy. that fucking thing. Yikes, that's scary. And somewhere there's an episode I did it with Howard Hughes, the club owner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, right, right, you right. You know right. Howard Hughes. Yeah, I'm thinking of piss jars. Another character. Oh, he's a whack job and a half. So we did. That's where I hiked the mountain right as we summited. There was a fucking douchebag dildo head playing music out loud. Oh, yeah, that's right. And he's like, you don't own the mountain. I was like, you don't own the mountain. Yes, that was a big ep. If you recall, yeah. So Get on the Patreon. Go back and listen. I said to Louie, I'm like, you got to do it. I mean, like, this is like an unbelievable climb here. Yeah, but he's 71. Yeah, so he's not in the best shape. He's afraid of heights, too. Ah, Corona. But I kept saying, let's go do it. And he kept doing the thing where he's like, well, walk a little. I'll see how far I can mm. get. We had to go get breakfast and drive to Tucson. But I know how to pull strings and poke. What do you call that? Poke the bear? I guess so. Uh, a nudge? Nudge. Uh, 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 uh. What's that one called? What do you call it? Uh, uh, here we go. Under the skin. Get under the skin. Like Corona. You know how to uh, bait? Sure. You bait him a little? I suppose so. But anyways, we start yeah. hiking, and uh, we're going up there. And like right away, there's like sh shortly into the hike, they have like a rail. You got to like use the rail oh, wow. to get up the fucking thing. That feels a little phony. And he kept being like, I can't do this. I'm like, ah, I'm going. I'll meet you at the bottom. Yeah. And then I'm like, I don't know. You used to be the old you would have done. And he's doing that whole thing. And You're taunting. I'm taunting a little bit. I'm motivating. Aha. Uh -huh. So he's sweating like a maniac. And it just keeps going and going and going. And it, this is a hell of a hike. It's like yeah. a, you know, hour and 45 minute hike. And I kept telling him, like, make sure you have three points of contact and in the middle you, you tell he's getting upset he's like you like saying that don't you uh, <laughs> and i was like well i'm just saying you just can't just walk up this thing it's dangerous sure so we keep going and every 20 minutes he's like all right i gotta stop here and i'm like 
okay, I'm, I gotta keep, I'm going to keep going. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, you kind of lost the title here. You don't have any... Uh, and he's he's Jesus, a, he's yeah. got a little ego in him too. He doesn't like uh, you're, you're agitating. Exactly. He doesn't like that. So of course he's like keeps coming. And then finally after like we're like three quarters of the way up, he's like, I, I really got to stop here. He's like, this is freaking me out because there's a ledge over here. And I was like, okay, well that's a little embarrassing. This close to the thing. And he's like, I fucking hate you. Uh. And it takes the next step, and you're like, yeah, come yeah. on. So it was really fun. We keep going, and then you kind of get to know people because you keep passing them, and they take a break. I kept slowing down for you know who. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The but ginger. Ev- eventually, we get up there. We summit this fucking thing, and I'm like, yowzer. It feels good. He comes up about 48 minutes later, yep. just covered in sweat. And, but he but made it. It's exciting, and it feels good because you, you just you keep going you just like just keep going don't look it's like the journey of a thousand miles yeah you just take that next step you keep doing it so i was proud of them but yeah. then we were fucking idiots i didn't i forgot my backpacks so we had no water oh. i prehydrated. yeah you're like flint no food no water no sunblock it's like a two and a half hour hike Holy all told dick. or longer than that actually we get up there and there was a lovely gentleman named keith keith Old guy, he had all the gear. He had the fanny pack, the sticks, the fucking floppy hat. Oh, yeah. He did it. You know, he's a hiker. Sure. And I think Louis did this on purpose. He had like a big plop down, like kind of right next to him. was like, woo, oh, my God. <laughs> and Keith is like, how's your water supply? And Louis like, we have none. And he's like, take this. I got an extra. Because he had the Camelback backpack. Yeah. So he gives Louis an extra water. He's like, you got to squeeze that, touch that. So we hydrate, and he had some kind bars. Gives him a few Jeez, kind bars. Jeez, this guy's an angel. Yeah, he was quite a guy, and uh, he gave us some advice or everything. I mean, I didn't need any. I'm fine. But sure, gave some advice, and we spent about ten seconds up there. Louis like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. This is too much for me. Wow. So, still felt good to summit, and then you got to go all the way back down, and back down is worse. Really, it's, like, it's tough on the knees, and now you're kind of facing. Down. Now I'm nervous. I always thought I was into it, but now I'm scared. Well, on the way up, you're looking at rock. Yeah. So you're just kind of doing this. On the way down, you're kind of going down like uh. this. You're looking. You got to kind of face the rock a little bit, like a ladder, and uh, it's a lot of loose. It's not a. It's not an easy hike. Now, do you wear these kicks? I had these kicks on. Okay. I'd prefer to have the whole thing, but yeah. you can do it. Jeez, I'm scared. Maybe I'll try it. It's a, quite a hike. It's really, because you're going there soon, aren't you? Uh, about a month, yeah. Tempe. You should go there, and right around the corner from the trailhead is Steak 44. It's going to cost you about a hundo. I'll, I'll reward myself with a nice piece of uh, beef. Yeah, you're going to have the best meal of your life. But uh, So did Camelback for the second time. Louie did it. Proud of the little guy. And uh, not much of a story. Nothing no, really happened. But, but that's great, because he would have quit if it wasn't for you. Yeah, he didn't even want to do it from the get-go. Wow. So, so I was like, I'll kill myself if we spend four days in Phoenix and don't go up Camelback. I mean, uh, we're on a hiking trail here. Yeah, now I got to do it. Yeah, it's it's quite an adventure, and it's a beautiful view up there. You can see for miles, and you really feel accomplished. I love hiking more than any activity really? in my life. I get nothing out of it. Oh, it's something. I mean, I like the, the view. I like the open air, but to me, I'm just walking. Well... Because it's the earth. You're on the earth. You're massaging the earth's back, mm. and you're just going up, and it's one step at a time. You're using your body as a uh, as a machine, as a tool, uh-huh. old school. I never thought about like that. And you're feeling the sun and the breeze and the view, and there's no phone, there's no wires, there's no TV. Uh-huh. You're just going up there, and you're, you're, you're taking it down one step at a time. All and right. to summit something feels really good. Good. Yeah, once you get to the top, that's not. I bet Louis was happy he did it after. Very happy. I mean, he was like so grateful. Then we went straight to breakfast and had like the best breakfast ever. We're covered in sweat. Wow. And just eggs and the whole thing. And yeah, you feel like you earned it. And then the waitress was nice. She was like, we were like, oh, we were here yesterday. She's like, I heard. Oh, sweet. Not a lot going on over there. Where? In the in the Phoenix area. Well, it's a it's a nice place to live. They they always get ranked like number one city to live That's or whatever, true. and I can see it. It's beautiful every day. You got the mountains. Yeah, but you ever been there in the summer? It's it's literally dangerous. It's like 150 degrees. Yeah, we went. We were there in the summer. That's right. We were there in August. You got to just stand in a pool. There's misters everywhere and misses. It's uh, it's not for me. I don't like the heat. That was a fun time. Tem- that was great. Tempe. Tempe. That was right after my wedding. It was like a few days after my wedding. Oh, is that right? We had cigars. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's wild. It was before my honeymoon. We had some great walking talks. Yes. Walked over that bridge, smoking cigars. Good times. That was really fun. we got to cherish those, because we're going to be old and gay soon, and uh, 
We have all these journey memories that we don't even think about. You know what I've been doing that I really like? i got to show you something. I do a... Uh, maybe I should put these on the Patreon. I do a a video summary of the trip. I oh. take little things and I edit it together. I put music to it. What? and uh, you got to put that on the pay. It's pretty good. Well, some of them are like... It's just me and my wife on a date night. Some of it's Louie. I don't think he wants his ah, mug right, out right, there. Right, right, right. So, uh, but they're fun to have. The little keepsakes. I did one of the cruise. I'll, sh- I'll put the cruise one up. I think put the cruise sick. up because then you see them a year later and you go, "Oh wow, look at that!" Yeah, we're fat. Yeah, fat, fat people. Well, I think we really scraped something together here. I think so. We put it together with scotch tape and gum, but it came out pretty good. We cultivated a, quite a program. Cultivated, swallow, plug it up. We got to plug. I don't even know what the fuck day this comes out. I guess the 24th. Is it the 24th right now? Call in if it's the 24th. Yes. I think it is. This weekend is Skankfest. That's wow. all sold out, I assume. I hope. We'll see you there. We're going to do a live pod, and then we'll be in Vegas next week. Hopefully Corona lets us keep all this shit. I know. We're going to be together quite a bit coming up. Bring Skankfest straight to Vegas. I'll get herpes. Uh, and then Melbourne Comedy Festival. I'll be down there in Melbourne, I hope, maybe. I don't know what's happening mm-hmm. with the thing. And then uh, Woo Ha Ha in Worcester, April 17th and 18th. Moon Tower, April 23rd to the 25th. Royal Oak, Michigan, April 30th and May 1st and 2nd. The Uncle Dale Benefit. I'll get a better link up for that thing. May 9th in Quincy. Uh, and then Salt Lake City. Wise guys, we'll be doing some hiking out there. May 22nd and 23rd. Toronto is May 30th. There was a mistake on their behalf or whatever, their part. They told me May 29th. That's why I was plugging it. Uh-huh. It's May 30th. Tickets are already selling pretty good for that. So get your tickets early for May 30th in Toronto. San Francisco Punchline, June 10th through the 13th. And Portland, Maine, June 27th and 28th. And then there's a bunch more dates. I'm coming back to Tampa in July. And that's it for now. You here, can check here. out uh, Mindful Metal Jacket and uh, ComedianJoeList.com, at Joe List Comedy for all that bullshit. Yeah, baby. All right. I'll be at uh, Vegas with you, Skanks with you, Stress Factory in New Jersey, New Brunswick. Come on out to that Jersey, folks. Brea, California, right outside L.A. Please come out to that, Los Angeles. Make the drive. It's a hell of a room. See you at Moon Tower. If that doesn't get canceled, Des Moines, Funny Bone, baby. That's a fun room. Fun people over there. Chicago is selling out. Calgary, Alberta. Hello. Come on down for that. Sorry. A. Eh? Tempe. Just talked about the camel hack. And uh, good nights in Raleigh, Philadelphia. We got a uh, Soho Theater in London, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and Miami Improv. Ooh. Back at Acme in Minneapolis. So, yeah, come on out to that. Check out the Patreon. Get a shirt. Live, laugh, queef. And the old stuff is on merchpump.com. Those are going like hotcakes. And uh, look. I just want to say this before we wrap up. Stick it in my ass. Me and this cat right here, we taped specials. We don't know if anybody's going to buy it. Maybe call in with some ideas. I'm thinking about just putting it out on my website like a like a CK move, sans jerk, uh, and just seeing what happens. Would you would you buy it for, I don't know, six bucks? Who knows? Six, seven. I think prices have gone up, by the way. Ten. Let's yeah, do ten. Ten Fuck might it. be something. Yeah, we'll tweet it. You'll tweet it. Tell a friend. Spread the love. And you'll, we'll own the goddamn thing. A little cash in our pocket. Fuck these networks. We're going to need you. Yes. That's what we're saying. And uh, the, the, I saw his. It's killer. Mine's okay. Come on out. See if we'll we'll sell. Give me some ideas. I don't know what to do. We're up against the wall. I hate myself. Uh, glory hole. Yeah, we're about fucking 30 grand in the hole over here. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you yeah. can help us out. Maybe we'll do Venmo. I don't know what the fuck. Ah. Maybe just put it out and say, here's my Venmo if you want to contribute. That's not bad. A little, little, you know, if you have it, send it. Yeah, yeah. It's like the Met. Just put a little basket out and put what you can in. Yeah, so uh, we'll do it. They're coming out, though. We got specials and albums coming out yeah, soon. Yeah, so are we. We're gay. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, tell us what you think. I don't know. We, we need you. We love you. You're, you're the family. I don't know what the hell that means. What am I, Olive Garden? All right. Well, yeah, thanks a lot. Praise Allah. Queef it up. Bye.